What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack video today We are opening up a pack of shadows over Innistrad uh, Obviously a fairly recent set in the last couple of years and one that I actually really enjoyed so I'm excited to open up uh, Hopefully we get something good and juicy in this pack But of course we are gonna go over this as if it is a limited environment uh, So we'll look at pack one pick one what we would actually pick out of this uh, pack Hopefully we get something good again, but uh, we will of course go through every card and make sure so our first common here is uh, Furtive Homunculus. It is a 2-1 for 2 with Skulk. Uh, this creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. Uh, honestly, this card doesn't seem bad for like a 2-drop. Obviously, it's not amazing because it's a 2-drop, but uh, it actually seems okay. It's not a first pick in my opinion, but it's actually decent. Uh, Angelic Purge as an additional, additional cost, sacrifice a permanent, and then you can exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment. This actually seems really good. This is basically uh, removal for anything. Uh, and it also, you can sacrifice just a land or something like that if you're late game. Obviously, you don't want to do that if you're playing this on turn three or something like that. But I think this is just really good removal. Uh, so I would actually consider that for sure. Uh, Vessel of Parmnesia. Paranesia. I, I'm really bad with uh, pronunciations, guys. Sorry. But it is an enchantment for two. Uh, pay one blue and sacrifice it. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Uh, and then you also draw a card. I don't really like this. Uh, it sort of plays into the mill strategy, though you do get to draw a card, which is okay. But you're paying three for that, and that seems a little bit much, in my opinion. Uh, Warped Landscape. It is a land that taps for generic, and you can tap two and tap it, sacrifice it, and search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. Uh, this is fine if you're in a multicolor deck, for sure. Uh, it's basically a more expensive Evolving Wilds, I guess. Uh, but it does actually tap for mana, so it's not completely useless anyway. Uh, so I'm not against this card, but I definitely wouldn't first pick it. Um, Explosive Apparatus is an artifact for one. Uh, you can pay three, tap it, and sacrifice it, and it deals two damage to target creature or player. This is basically a more expensive shock, uh, but it is actually okay. It's colorless removal. It's not amazing uh, by any means. I don't think it's anywhere near as good as Angelic Purge, uh, but I would actually consider playing this in really any deck, uh, but definitely not first pick. Uh, Stoic Builder is a 2-3 for 3. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this seems marginal at best. I feel like in tandem with something like the Warped Landscape or something like that, uh, you can generate some incidental value. But in Limited, I feel like that's really not what you're trying to do, so I just don't think that this is all that good. Excuse me. Uh, Shambleback is one black for a sorcery. Exile target creature card from a graveyard and put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. You also gain two life. I don't really like this. You're dependent upon a creature already being in the graveyard, uh, and all you're really getting is a 2-2. Yes, it's only one mana, so it's, I guess, technically good value, and you do also gain a couple life, but I feel like for for a limited deck, you'd want to impact the board a little bit more, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, Uncaged Fury, two and a red for an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains double strike until end of turn. Uh, this is a combat trick. It's not amazing. I don't think either. Uh, it costs three manda mana, excuse me, but it does give double strike, which is hugely powerful. Uh, you can definitely finish off a game pretty quickly or uh, deal with creatures that are very problematic. Um, for that reason, I think this is playable, but I definitely wouldn't first pick it. Uh, Byway Courier is a 3-2 for three. When it dies, you investigate, which means you put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield. Uh, that clue token has pay two and sacrifice it to draw a card. Uh, this is fine. It's a 3-2 for three. It's not amazing, uh, but it does actually have some incidental value left behind. So I would play this in a green deck, uh, but it's really not a first pick in my mind. <clears throat> uh, our first uncommon Moonlit Hunt uh, is an instant for two. Choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf deals damage equal to its power to that creature. This is obviously great if you are in the werewolf deck or the wolf deck, uh, which is actually a thing in this set. Uh, it would be ac actually really, really good. Uh, it's basically a removal for it, but uh, without already being in that deck, I wouldn't want to first pick this. Uh, Essence Flux is an instant for one blue. Exile target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it's a spirit, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, I don't really like this card, to be honest, unless you have a, a, an EOT uh, ability on a creature. 
I don't think that this is actually good, and you'd really have to have a lot to make this a playable card in a deck. Uh, yes, it's obviously incidental value for spirits as well, but I don't really like that, to be honest. Uh, Near Heath Cap Chaplin excuse me, uh, is a 3-1 for 4 with lifelink. Uh, you can pay two uh, and a white and exile it from your graveyard. Put two 1-1 uh, white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Uh, activate this ability only the time you could play an instant. Um, this card seems okay. It's, again, I feel like it's probably pretty good over, t over time because you do get those incidental tokens. Uh, and they're also flyers, which is obviously great and limited. Uh, the lifelink is also kind of nice. So maybe this is a really good card. I don't know. I'll keep it here for now. Uh, and then our rare is Avacyn's Judgment. Uh, it is one in a red for a sorcery. It also has a madness cost of X and uh, red. Uh, it deals two damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Uh, if, it, if its madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided as you choose instead. So basically you can actually scale this with madness. Uh, I really like this card actually. I think that might be the pick so far. Uh, Kindly Stranger is our flip card here. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is two and a black for a two, three with delirium, uh, pay two and a black transform it, uh, activate this ability only if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard. And if you do flip it, you get a demon possessed, witch. Uh, it is a four, three, uh, when it transforms, uh, you may destroy target creature, obviously a great card. Uh, and actually, man, I really like that card too. Uh, I think I would take these out to be honest. Um, I like that this deals damage to the face, and I like that this destroys a creature. Um, I might actually go for the Judgment, uh, though Kindly Stranger seems pretty great. So, it's up to you, but I think I would go with the Avacyn's Judgment. Obviously, let me know in the comments section below. I am not by any means a master at drafting, so I could be very wrong. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like and comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.